Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings and I'm back with another tutorial for y'all. This week I'm gonna do a different take on the Northern Lights tumbler. So I am by no means trying to reinvent the wheel here. Somebody just posted one in my Facebook group last week and then I've done several with glitter and mica and different products that we commonly use, but there's a new product from Miss Lillian's and they're called Tanglewood Super Shifter Embellishing Waxes. So y'all might have seen me use the neon embellishing waxes before. There's all different kinds of one, uh, ones that have Woody's Goodies micas in them that are super sparkly that I love using as well. And these are actually new and they're super shifters. So they totally change colors and have this great color shift that y'all know I love when you put them over black. And so when I saw that Northern Lights and I was like, oh, I can use the super shifters for that. That'll be so fun. So I actually did one live in my Facebook group to give them a little sneak peek. And then now I'm going to layer some foils over it for y'all today. Do some epoxy and then add a little decal. And so it was so much fun. Um, I love creating a little take on it. Um, so it's just a different variation. I'm going to show y'all all the colors that I use to create it too. But then I'm going to give y'all some variations of it. And then I'm also going to give you variations of how I actually created the tumbler. Because once I start Started it, I ran into some, some issues with sealing the embellishing waxes and then added the full adhesive. So I'm going to walk you guys through all of that and the problems that I ran into. Hopefully I did the legwork so y'all won't have to uh, run into the same issues that I did. So I'll tell you guys all about those in the tutorial. So I hope y'all enjoy it. And like I always say, I'll link all the products that I use in the description box below. So make sure you check out those links as well as I'll include some discount codes for y'all. So don't forget your discount code. I try to make it Kelly 10 everywhere I go, but we've still got some that are a little bit different, so make sure you check out the links to get the right discount codes for the links. And then also, y'all join my Dixie Darlings Tumblr's Facebook group. I go live on Sunday night. We work on all kinds of fun foil projects. Um, and just, I try to use as many different products as I can. And sometimes I'm just testing them out live with y'all. So hop over there, and it's my chance to get to hear what tutorials will help y'all best and what y'all wanna see. So thank y'all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, we're starting with the 30 ounce Chatanga Icy Steel from Craft Haven. Um, this is the tumbler that fits in any cup holder, y'all. I love this. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about this because I'm not a big fan of the modern or the curved, those kind of styles, but I actually love this one. So I've got a 80 grit just sheet of sanding paper here. I'm going to sand the cup down. I never show you guys this, so I just wanted to go through this really quick. Um, and I will link all the products that I use in the description box below. So anything that you hear me say that I go over quickly, I will link it in the bottom in the description box below. So after I've sanded it down really good, I take my 99% rubbing alcohol. The alcohol is from Counterculture. Uh, CCDIY, I'll link it as well. This is a file that it was just, I searched Northern Lights, Tree Silhouette SVG and Etsy. I will link the one that I use in the description box below. It was just a random one that I found. And I sized it out about 11 inches wide. Because of this cups on a curb, I do trim it down. So you can see I just cut the little trees and as you watch, um, you'll see that I'm gonna cut them down even smaller just to get them to fit like I want them to. So this was actually a template that was made for a 20 ounce skinny straight. And because of this curb on the cup, I end up just kind of slicing it down and just kind of piece milling it onto the cup the way that I wanted it to, just fitting the fitting the trees together. So. I'm just going to let you guys kind of watch. I did want to leave this in here, though, so you can kind of see how I do this. And I'm just going to work my way around to the cup until all the trees are laid down. And because this vinyl is going to be pulled up, um, I'm just going to use this um, as kind of my silhouette line. It doesn't really matter if the bottom's kind of creased up or whatever. You mainly just want to get the trees flat on the cup was my goal here. And I meant to tell you, I did spray paint this cup. I used the black color shot uh, spray paint that I found at Michael's. I think a lot of uh, Hobby Lobbies have them, uh, Walmart, but I, the, it is the color shot and it's just the color black that I used, um, that I spray painted. I let it dry for a good hour or so and now I'm just gonna lay my vinyl down.
And then once I have my trees down, I'm just gonna take some painter's tape and wrap it around the bottom. I'm not spray painting this or anything. It was more just for my own protection to make sure that when I start using these super shifters on the cup, they just don't get down into the bottom section. So it's not something that you have to do. I just really did it for my own protection <laughs> of that bottom right there. And, and also just not to scratch it up while I'm rolling the cup around trying to get those super shifters on there. So immediately I'm gonna go into, these are Miss Lillian's Tanglewood Super Shifter Jewels. They're embellishing waxes that have color shift elements to them. So I use a lot of different colors on this cup, but I'm gonna tell you what I used and then I'm gonna narrow it down to if it were me and you only needed four colors, which ones would you use? So because these are pretty, they are a little pricey, but they go so long, so far. If y'all notice, you can barely see where I've tapped my finger in it. And I just apply these with a gloved finger. I I feel like they go on better than with a brush, but I barely just tap my finger down on the top of it. And the first color I'm using is Sorcerer. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Crystal Ball, but it's not something that you have to add in. You can see it's a very similar color. The main difference is, is that one of them is a little bit thicker cut than the other one, if that makes sense. So it's almost like your glitter has different cuts. These have different cuts of mica in them that make them just a little bit grainier or you know, uh, like a finer cut but both of them are beautiful. They have a little bit different shift, but if you were gonna do one of the two of those, I probably, ugh, I probably would go with Crystal Ball. And then the next one I'm using is Dragon. This is a really pretty, you see it looks pink there, but when you put it in on the cup, it actually looks like a green to gold shift. It's very beautiful. And then I go in next with Hemlock, and you're gonna see it's a really pretty purple. So it's got that pink to purple tone in it. Um, this is one of those that you could leave on the cup or not take, you know, like if you had to cut out a color, I probably would do, you know, I would start with probably either Sorcerer or Crystal Ball. Both of them are beautiful, really. And then go to Dragon, which creates that green. And then I did Hemlock, but you probably could possibly leave that one out um, if you didn't want that. And you could just go back in with like your Dragon or your Crystal Ball there. So, um, I mean, short, short, or crystal ball there. And then the next one I'm gonna use is um, Nightshade. It is gorgeous, okay? So it has a really pretty purple tint to it. So I would say don't leave this one off, y'all, because it is really, really pretty. It has a really pretty sparkle in it. It has this really purple blue shift that's really pretty on the cup. So I go to that one next, and then I'm gonna use Alchemy after that. It looks orange in the container. Um, and you can see it here, I'm just going back with some of these. This is going back to Nightshade. Um, I just kind of, if I don't feel like they're layering good enough or they're mixing in, I kind of just blend them in. So you can see I'm actually gonna add a little bit of Nightshade there at the beginning. And it's just this really pretty purple blue shift. I had added a little bit at the, at the far end of it. So you can see that some of those colors you could probably leave off. If I was gonna pick between Nightshade and Hemlock, I would definitely pick Nightshade. It just has a more vibrant color. So I know I did this cup in my Facebook group and they were like, okay, if you don't have all those colors, which ones would you use? So I'm like, I probably would go Crystal Ball, Dragon, Nightshade if I had to do. And then you're gonna go into um, this alchemy that you're gonna see here in a minute that has a really pretty green to gold shift that's very different from the other, the dragon that has, a, has like a gold tint to it. So, it's gonna be a little bit different. And I actually go back in and add a little bit to various areas of the cup because it's really pretty. You can see how it looks orange right there. But y'all, when you put it on the cup, it has this green to gold that has an, a crazy sparkle in it. It's so pretty. So I'm just gonna let y'all watch me do this. After I do that, then I'm gonna go into the Blue Lady of the Lake. It's gonna be the next color. And then the final color that I'm gonna add is gonna be called Minerva. It's a must have too, y'all. So if I had to narrow down from the two, four, six, eight colors I used to four, I would probably go Crystal Ball, Dragon, Nightshade, Oh, I mean, oh, I mean, oh, hmm. it's almost like you really have to add that alchemy in there. You could leave that one out if you wanted to. So maybe I would replace, yeah, no, I'd probably just leave that one out. And then you got to do Lady of the Lake because it's a really pretty blue. And then Minerva is this really beautiful purple. So you're gonna see, I'm just gonna let y'all watch me do this. I'm kind of careful around to do it around the handle. And then um, I'll just go ahead and blend in the handle as well, 
just because, um, you know, I just wanted it to, I wanted it to flow with the rest of the cup. Now, what I will tell y'all is that I did another variation of this cup because these embellishing waxes actually do better over something that has a porous surface. So a spray paint, like this color shot spray paint I used actually has, um, you know, it's a slick surface. So I actually go back and do another cup with Miss Lillian's Swamp Mud and it's like a, it's like a chalk base paint. So if you use something that has this porous, that has a little grip to it, these embellishing waxes actually stick better because I tried this cup various ways and just putting the embellishing waxes over it and then I tried to seal it with Counterculture's Quick Coat and then go right into my foil adhesive. That did not work <laughs> is what I can tell y'all. Um, it pulled the it pulled the quick coat off of it. So you're gonna hear me talk about this a little bit later, but I also do a second variation where I basically coat the whole cup in Miss Lillian's Swamp Mud that has a very good grip to it. And then I do the whole cup with these super shifters. And then I almost do like a reverse um, where I don't lay the trees down, I actually lay the top down and then spray paint the bottom black and then add my foils in. So if you guys want me to do a part two and show you guys that variation of how I do it, I can go back and do a part two to that as well. But you can see here, I've just tried to blend them the best I can. I do allow this to dry overnight. And then I'm gonna go in with a layer of Quick Coat. Y'all, do you see how this sparkles when you add this? This is Quick Coat from Countercultures. Uh, line and I love it. Y'all know I sell a lot of stuff with it. Um, I will say in this instant, be very careful um, with your sealing and then going into a layer of epoxy and then going into the foil adhesive. When you go in and add your foil adhesive, and I'll remind you of this later, be very, very careful. <laughs> Do it very gently uh, just because of these embellishing waxes and especially if you're just going to use spray paint and you're not going to use a chalk, a chalk base paint. I would say if you can try to use a chalk base paint. If I had to go back and do it over again, and I've done this cup several times, y'all, in different variations, trying to figure out what the best way to do it is. And I definitely would say put the chalk paint down first <laughs> or a Miss Lillian's um, Swamp Mud because it has a grip to it that that does really, really well um, once you're trying to seal over it and then add full adhesive and epoxy and all that stuff. And I'm all about like every layer sealing to the next. So if it gets dropped, it doesn't crack and so on. So anyway, I do add this layer of Countercultures Quick Coat. I let it dry for about 45 minutes and then I am gonna pull this um, vinyl off, okay? So you're gonna see the process maybe work a little bit different here. I'm not sure because I did this cup several times and I recorded it various ways. So, but I am gonna go in here after the quick coat dries and pull my vinyl off. And then I'm gonna go in and layer, uh, add a layer of um, Countercultures Mini Viscosity Artist Resin. And I will say on the other variation, you don't get the same effect as the trees. And it's funny because I was actually sitting here and I was FaceTiming Cindy at Southern Bell Glitter um, where you are going to find these Miss Lillian's uh, super shifters. And she was looking at it. She was like, oh my goodness, it's almost like there's snow on the tips of the trees where those embellishing waxes are kind of sitting in there. And I said, well, I made sure to kind of pull it back in there because I wanted the outline to have it. Because she was like, how did you get that outline? I said, it's not an outline. It's just where you pull those super shifters. I've kind of pulled them back down into my vinyl and it created that, you know, very distinct outline. So I will say that when you do the reverse effect of this and you lay the top down and then you spray paint the trees on there, you're not going to get that effect. And I really do like that effect. So it's a little bit more work, y'all, but I really love how this one turned out. And I will tell y'all too, I just take a little black spray paint, spray it in a cup, take a paper towel, dip it in any of those little areas that look scratched. That's what I put on there. So you can see I pulled my vinyl off. Now I'm going into, I'm using about 20 milliliters of Countercultures Medium Viscosity. I'm gonna do a coat of epoxy on this. I wanna make sure I cover it really, really well here and uh, get the handle. I try to go around the handle multiple times. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a little place there. Usually I do, even as careful as I try to be, where the epoxy just did not set well like I wanted it to on the first coat anyway. So, and then I let this coat dry for, I let this coat dry overnight. I'm gonna be honest with y'all because I knew going in and adding that full adhesive, I wanted the epoxy to be really dry and I didn't want there to be any opportunity of that full adhesive interacting with the epoxy and pulling it off or causing it to lift or anything. So. I was just on the, the bandwagon of better safe than sorry. So I let it dry overnight. Then I'm gonna go in with Southern Bell Glitter's full adhesive 
and I'm gonna take my paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint it on there. So my original thought of doing this is I was gonna do all that. I was gonna layer the layer of quick coat, leave my vinyl on, paint this, add my foil adhesive, add my foils, and then I was gonna pull the vinyl off. But that did not work because you had to do a layer of epoxy. So, but it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm just gonna go back in here with my paintbrush and the foil adhesive and just paint it in there, which you were gonna do anyway. Um, I just was a little bit more careful to make sure I didn't get it in the trees or on the black area of the cup. And I just spread it out pretty thin. And I'm going to add um, Crystal Ball. It's this beautiful semi-transparent kind of foil. It's actually a transparent, but you can see here. Look at this, y'all. I just placed little dots over there, just random. And I wanted it to look like the stars. So I thought, this is going to be so fun. What if, after over the Super Shifters, I can add this Crystal Ball and it looks like a starry sky. So... I love how it turned out. Um, then after I do this, I did kind of let this sit for just a little bit because that full adhesive is, uh, it still can get kind of tacky. And then I'm gonna go back in with a layer of quick coat as well over this to seal it because a lot of people are under the impression that the foils repel the epoxy. The foils do not repel the epoxy. The adhesive repels the epoxy is what we figured out. So after I kind of let this sit, I do go into a layer of quick coat. And I'm, when I say sit, y'all, maybe like 10 minutes. I mean, not very long. I go in and add a layer of Countercultures quick coat here just to seal in those foils and that foil adhesive. So there's a barrier between that and my layer of epoxy. And then I'm going to let this coat dry for about 45 minutes. And then I'm going to go right in with a layer of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. I use about 20 milliliters. And then I use my torch to pop any bubbles and I let that coat sit. Um, I let it spin and turn and dry for about six to eight hours. And then I'm gonna go in and layer my decal. And I actually do two variations of this cup. One of them I don't add the foils to, and I will show y'all that at the end. And I don't add a decal to it just because I really wanted y'all to see what those super shifters looked like under a couple of coats of epoxy. Um, they're just so pretty. I probably will go back and add um, the crystal ball because I think it was just a fun little touch to add into the sky so it does look like the stars are in the sky. Um, but I wanted to do one where y'all could really see the super shifters under epoxy and how pretty they are. Oh, how sparkly they are. I just love these. So here you can see I'm just going back in with another layer of epoxy over that quick coat after it's dried. Um, like I said, I'm doing several cups here, but I usually tend to use between 15 and 20 milliliters um, of countercultures medium viscosity. Use my torch to pop any bubbles and then let it dry for about six to eight hours before I'm gonna add my decal in here. Then I have printed off on the, one of the white opal uh, vinyls, adhesive vinyl that I absolutely love. It's like this blue to purple shift that I love. I knew I wanted to do a color shift opal on here. And this is a letter by Stephanie File. Uh, y'all know I love her files. I'm a member of her SVG club. And I encourage you that if y'all are not in her SVG monthly club to get in it because she offers so many wonderful files that you cannot find anywhere else. She does not put them in her Etsy store until much, much later. And some of them you can't find. So I decided that I wanted to just add it onto the bottom. Um, and I will link her SVG club. You can't get in it usually. It's not open, but I do have a link where you can join right now. And amazing files. I cannot talk enough about her SVG club. I really love it. So here I'm just showing y'all. I don't usually show y'all where I sand. This is just a sanding block. I was hesitant to show y'all that it was done with a 60 grit sanding block because I have used this block a lot and it is really worn down. So it is not near as coarse as a new 60 grit sandy wood. Normally I would probably go with a 120. But you can see, I've just kind of created this little barrier at the top, this little rim where my epoxy will stick to it. And then I just take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I just wipe it down. And then I do take a tack cloth and wipe down my full cup before I go in. And I'm going to add another layer of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. Again, I use about 20 milliliters. Um, I make sure I'm getting it, getting it around that handle really good. Um, and then I let this coat dry for about four to six hours. And then I do go in with a second coat just to make sure that it's all covered and that decal is covered really well. 
Um, so I do go in with a second layer and use my torch to pop any bubbles and then I'll let that go dry. And then we are down to our final design. So I will show y'all this one with the foils added to the top that make it look like the stars and the decal. And then I'll also show y'all the one where I just did the super shifters at the top. It's beautiful in its own right, y'all. So I really love how these turned out. There are so many people that do some beautiful um, Northern Lights tumblers. I just thought this would be a fun little take with these super shifters that um, it'd be a fun way to use them. I love using them and um, I'm always trying to think of what I can do. And so when literally somebody posted one of these Northern Lights tumblers in my Facebook group, I was like, oh, the super shifters will be perfect. So anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, if you like my tutorials, hit the bell button and subscribe so you don't miss my future tutorials. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.